What's up, guys? Stas here. So a red day overall in the stock market today as the S&P 500 went down $17, down about half a percent. The Dow went down $210, down 0.8%, as the NASDAQ pretty much break even, down $3, with the Russell 2000 down $8.40, down 0.6%. And the crazy thing is, a lot of this selling off, a lot of this red, is actually continuing in the after-hour session. Take a look here at SPY, which is simply an ETF that tracks the S&P. It closed at 308 and now in the after hour session, it's down to $306. The NASDAQ futures are also getting crushed along with the Dow futures. And in this video, we're going to talk about why the market is selling off, whether or not the stock market in the next couple of weeks is in trouble. We're seeing Apple closing stores across the country here in states where the CV cases are actually spiking. So we're seeing a massive company closing down stores. Are other companies going to follow suit as these cases are continuing to go up? I want to go over what my plans are right now in this environment in this video. And as always, I'm going to be sharing with you guys individual stocks that I'm actually watching and looking to trade as we're getting deeper into the month of June and as things are getting getting pretty funky here in the stock market. So if you guys find value in the video, as always, hit that like button for me. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out all the free links down below in the description box if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community. And if you want two free stocks from Webull valued up to $1,400, again, all of those are linked down below in the description box. So let's kick off this video Starting off with the S&P 500, which closed about an hour and three minutes ago, down again $17.60. And you guys can see here over the past one, two, three, four trading days, the markets have been pretty calm, right? We haven't exploded to the upside. We haven't really fallen through the floor quite yet. And this is really because of multiple things, in my opinion, right? We had Jerome Powell testify two days in a row. That kind of had the markets on edge. Now we're having Apple, you know, closing these stores, which we'll get into here in a couple of minutes. We have the cases spiking up in different states, such as Texas, Florida, and many other states. So the markets are in a point in time where there's a lot going on. Like there has been, honestly, there's been a lot going on recently, but the markets are, they're kind of spooked, right? I talked about this in yesterday's video and recent videos and in the chat today. The markets are just flat out spooked right now, in my opinion, as the whole economy reopening, cases falling down, you know, that, that, that perfect scenario is it might not play out guys it really might not play out at this point again as these cases are going up and as these businesses that are already struggling they're potentially going to struggle even more if we get a second wave here a big wave and potentially another lockdown guys this is what you really have to you know keep an eye out on if we get another lockdown and these businesses that are already struggling you know they're going to struggle even more and potentially go into bankruptcy. The Fed's going to have to print even more money, putting this country into more debt. The debt to GDP ratio getting even more unattractive. So it's like a whole spiral that could go out of control if we get this second wave. And again, it seems like it could be the start of the second wave right now. So again, the markets have been kind of teeter tottering, not really doing much over these, uh, you know, over these past couple of days. And you guys can see, despite this, the markets are still in an uptrend. The S and P is holding the channel, but again, we're just consolidating. So for next week, I'm looking at this uptrend here. You guys can see the support of this channel. This is imperative to hold. The S&P needs to hold this for the bulls, right? For the, the bull case to continue, at least from a technical perspective, right? Because you guys have to realize, you know, if we break 3080 and ultimately back into the low 3000s, you know, 2900s, that's breaking the uptrend. At that point, we might be going down to, you know, 2800 and heck, maybe even lower as things 
potentially escalate here over the next couple of weeks. And you guys know the upside target here. Let's say we don't break 3080. Let's say we don't go down to 3000. We have to break out of 3130 to about 3150, right? Because this has been the resistance over the past couple of days. Take a look. I mean, today we went up to 3150, which we tested back on the 16th of June and we failed to break out of it. And and what's that, you know, what is that telling me? That's telling me the bullish momentum, at least in the short term, it's capped, right? There's a cap on the momentum at this point, and we need some sort of spark, some sort of positive news in the sea of negativity now to kind of get us out of that 3150, whether that's more stimulus whether that's the infrastructure bill, which probably won't go through, we need something that's going to get us out of that 3150 to 3200 level because you guys know from a technical perspective, right, if we break that level, 3200, whatever it is, we might be going up to 3300, which is at the top of this channel. That's if the uptrend continues. And at that point, we're going to be battling with all-time highs on the S&P, which is around 3,400, right? So just keep an eye on those levels. Again, guys, we're in an uncertain time period, and things are going to get more volatile. We're seeing the VIX already, which is also known as the fear index. It's it's, uh, called the volatility index. The VIX is up. It's up 6% today. It was up 6%, up $2. And when there's fear in the market, volatility in the market, the VIX goes up. And this is typically a tricky time period, especially for swing traders. And it's a pretty favorable time period, quite honestly, for the day traders out there because day traders, they love volatility. They like the up and down movement to kind of get in and out of day trades, scalping different stocks, and so forth. But swing traders, they kind of like the smooth uptrend, the slow growth better, at least my style of swing trading, because, you know, it's easier to spot patterns that way. It's easier to spot setups and so forth, right? So overall, volatility is popping up. S&P, those are a couple of levels to keep an eye out for. The Dow today, guys, it's still hovering above 25.8, which is good here for the bulls, right? You guys can see 25.8 is a pretty critical level of support. But one thing that's a bit worrisome is we're seeing a descending pattern form. Lower highs, that is, right? We hit 27.5. Next lower high was at about 26.5. Now, if this ends up being the next lower high, which it very well could be, that's going to be a descending pattern, especially if we confirm the dump below the uptrend uh, support line that we're seeing here on the four-hour chart, which is this line right here that my mouse is over right now, right? If we break 25.8, guys, watch out below. The Dow could probably go low 25,000. 24,800. Um, those are a couple of levels that I'm looking at on the downside for the Dow Jones. And the NASDAQ somehow still above 10,000 as big tech out there is pretty much holding up uh, the NASDAQ, of course, and the overall markets from completely collapsing today, I think. Um, we see, you know, Facebook was up, Amazon was up. Netflix was up. Apple was down just a little bit, not much, just down two bucks. Um, you know, Google was down. So overall, tech did decent today, which is why the NASDAQ was pretty break even. But overall, a couple price targets here that I have on the NASDAQ. And uh, a good thing is, I guess, in the short term, that it did hold 99.60, like we talked about yesterday. Um, this is a short term support that you guys can see, especially on the five day, five minute. You guys can see it held 99. 60 pretty strongly and honestly if we successfully break out of 10k next week which I'm not sure with how the futures are looking now I'm not sure what would happen but of course anything can change over the weekend but let's say we break 10k that's going to be bullish, right? We might go back, take out the highs from today, and maybe even take out the all-time highs, which really aren't too far off at this point. But let's say the selling continues like, again, the futures are selling off after hours here. Let's say that, you know, we see Sunday's futures go down, Monday morning's futures are down, you know, the stock market looks red. A target that I'd have on the uh, NASDAQ on the downside is going to be 9700 9750 That's generally an 
area of uh, 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 an old all-time high, right? So that could serve as a support, and that would give uh, a pretty nice trim on the NASDAQ of about 3 to 4%, right? So overall, guys, those are some technical spots on the markets today. On the Dow, S&P, the NASDAQ, kind of what went down in today's session. And again, there's a lot of uncertainty. Cases are spiking. We're seeing Apple closing stores, which we'll get into right now in a bit more detail. And let's go to Apple stock while we, uh, while we talk about that, right? And it's crazy. Apple, I mean, it sold off about... 10 bucks. I mean, from 356. And mind you, Apple hit an all time high today. Crazy. It hit 356. It sold off about $12. But ultimately, it didn't really sell off much, down about 0.6% today. And it's still holding the uptrend here on the 50 SMA on this four hour chart, which, quite honestly, guys, this could end up just being an entry point um, if the markets do turn around, if the markets completely brush this news under the rug, that could happen, right? Nobody knows, literally nobody knows what's going to happen. But like I say all the time, we have to be prepared for many different scenarios because you don't want to be blindsided, guys. That's one thing that I've learned over the years. You don't want to be blindsided. You want to have options. You want to have strategies to mitigate risk. You want to be able to make money on the downside of a market, on the upside of a market. Have options. Do not get blindsided, guys. So Apple today closed certain stores like they said they would back in May. If you guys recall, they said back in May, you know, if this CV gets worse, we get a second wave, we get more spikes in the cases. We're willing to, to do what it takes to mitigate it's spreading, right? To mitigate it, you know, getting getting spread across many people. And they're staying to their word. 11 stores were actually shut when it comes down to Apple. The store closures are in Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Arizona. Specifically, they're actually closing two stores in Florida two stores in North Carolina, one store in South Carolina, and six stores in Arizona. And just to throw this in there, according to Johns Hopkins University, these states that I just mentioned have seen upwards ticks in CV cases. And that, again, that's kind of what's spooking the markets. One of the biggest companies out there in the world. And the thing is here, guys, if other companies follow suit, again, the companies that are already damaged, that are already seeing a lot of pain right now, if they start to reclose, the market's going to go down. It's got to go down. And, and me, I don't like picking a side. I don't like being biased and trading on my bias because that's stupid. I like trading on technicals, what's in front of me. That's what's proved to work. But honestly, there's no way the market is not going to go down if we see a resurgence in this stuff, guys. And maybe it won't go down 40% like it did back in March. You know, you guys can see the S&P was down 30 40%. But I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a 10 15% correction. And you guys saw my video yesterday where I, I, I went over a bunch of stocks for my long-term accounts that I'm looking to buy in the case of a correction. And I'll link that down below in the description. You know, I'm open to this. I'm open to the markets going down to actually pick up some more stocks at a cheaper price for my long-term accounts that I'm looking to hold for 5, 10 plus years at least, right? So let me know down below in the comments, guys, your thoughts on the markets. Now let's talk about and your thoughts on Apple and the whole chain reaction effect that could occur here. And now let's talk about what I did in the markets today. Nothing crazy. If you guys recall, a couple days ago, I got into Neo stock. Yesterday, I locked in profits on half of my position at $7.15. I believe the move was about 6%. I bought on this day, 660-ish, 670. And I sold yesterday, 715. The move was about... Six, seven, eight percent, roughly in that area. And today I decided I'm going to dump off my shares for the weekend, the rest of my shares. And I did that at around seven dollars and 40 cents. And at this point, guys, Neo's actually ripping up 
into the 750s. And this stock has been a killer, guys. It's been going up regardless of what the market's been doing. Again, the markets have been kind of teeter-tottering flat over the past five days. And in the same time period, NEO has gone from high fives to about the high seven. So the stock's gone up $2. And quite honestly, at this point, guys, when it comes to NEO, I'm not bearish by any means, but I'm going to give it some breather room. Not that I'm not going to trade it anymore. I want to see what it does next week. Again, if the markets take a correction here, you know, NEO could easily see a trim back to the mid sixes and heck, maybe even the low sixes. You guys have to realize in just this month alone, this stock's gone from under four bucks to about seven fifty. That's a move of almost a hundred percent. So I've won three straight uh, trades in a row with Neo. I don't really want to press my luck too much here. Um, so I'm going to give it some breather room. Again, if it pulls down, I'm more than happy to buy more shares. I'd be more than willing to buy some more swing shares in this particular stock. And over the weekend here, guys. I'm actually holding a couple of Ulta shares, which could could come back and bite me in the butt. Let's be honest, guys. Again, the futures are down here pretty, not substantially, but down a little bit. So this could come bite me in the butt um, come Monday. But with my swing philosophy, guys, I'm not buying in 100% into a position right off the bat, right? I'm actually scaling in. That's what I do. I scale in with about 10, 15% at first. As the stock pushes up, I add more money to it, and if the stock dumps, let's say Ulta takes a big dump on Monday, I cut losses, and the thing here is, since I scaled into the position with, again, 10-15% of my position, I don't lose as much money as I would have if I went all in, right? So I'm buying, all right, I did buy a bit of Ulta, I plan on buying more of it as it goes back to the mid-220s to the to the 230s that's where i'm looking to add a bulk of it of the position but i couldn't resist guys i couldn't resist today the stock got clobbered i mean it was down uh, up rather earlier in the day but it went down all the way to 210 down about 8%. So I actually picked up some at about 215.30, I think roughly is where my shares are right now. So I'm already underwater on the shares. But again, this is kind of my little weekend fun trade. Um, and uh, I don't really recommend you guys to just take flyer fun trades like this. Not that it's like some, some just straight up gamble, but it's, it's just one of those that I, I like. I think it's at a pretty nice dip. And I am buying a bit before the confirmation of the breakout, but I'm okay with that. I'll live with that. And if it does end up gapping down, I lose money. It's okay. I'll live with it, right? So overall, I'm in Ulta, sold out of NEO, and that's all I'm doing, guys. I have some calls in GDX, Virgin Galactic that, that expire in a couple of months. But other than that, you know, my trades have just been very short, very sweet. I've been sticking to quality setups, and I've been sticking to a lot of cash. Patients have been, you know, it's it's been what I've been going for, being patient. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. And I'm looking to see as, you know, these cases go up, what businesses do. That's what I'm at. That's where I'm at, at least, right? And I'd love to know down below in the comments where you guys are at. And now let's just get into these stocks that I'm looking to buy. Not necessarily that I'm looking to buy right now, but just stocks in general that I'm keeping my eyes out on. So we already talked about Apple. No need to go over this one again, but we can see again it's holding that 50 SMA overall on the four hour chart. So I'd like to see what it does there on Monday and, and and this upcoming week in general, right? Do we end up breaking that and going down to the lower 300s? That could definitely happen, right? Microsoft, you guys saw Apple hit an all-time high today. Microsoft almost did, or it did as well. It almost hit $200. It actually hit $199.84, and it actually trimmed about 5 bucks off the all-time highs. It's down about 2% from the all-time highs. So at this point, not that I'm saying this is a juicy deal or anything, but 
I'm looking to see, you know, if we hold 190, heck, if we see a bigger pull down in the markets, we get to the mid 180s. This could end up being a swing trade, no doubt about it, on the dip here for Microsoft, which, guys, let's not joke ourselves. These stocks are holding up the markets. A lot of people are flooding into these stocks as safe haven stocks, right, as, you know, the CV proof stocks. And for that reason, it could continue be, you know, being inflated. The stock could continue be, you know, going up. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. And I'm not, again, jumping the gun quite yet. I'm being patient. Maybe mid 180s, low 180s, 190s, low 190s. That could be an entry point overall here for Microsoft. So let's bang through another couple stocks here, guys. Two in particular here. They're not stocks. They're ETFs, but they did very well today. GDX Gold Miners ETF up 3.5%, up $1.15 here. This is actually an ETF that I have uh, call options for, and those call options that expire in September, I'm actually down quite a bit on them. I'm down about 30 40% or something like that, but today they were actually up. 30% on this move that GDX saw and it's because gold had a had a stellar day. Let's not let's not sugarcoat it. Gold is finally starting to turn back up. It's turning bullish here. You guys can see a very good sign is we held 1700, right? That was critical for the bulls. We broke out of this wedge a couple weeks ago, which was bullish. Now we broke out of another wedge. I know there's a lot of sloppiness on this chart here. So let me just quickly clear the drawing set to show you guys what wedge I'm referring to. I'm referring to this one right here. Now, let's see if I can uh, redraw it very quickly. You guys see this? We held 1700-ish. Now we're breaking out of the overall descending wedge here, and that's why we're seeing a huge push-up in gold, right? And especially, we'll see another big push-up, especially if we take out 1760 next week, which in general, there's no denying that's been a resistance over the past couple of weeks. And from 1760, guys, watch out for 1780, and from 1780 to 1800 plus, that's ultimately where I see gold going here at this point. And other than GDX, which is a gold miners ETF, which is also breaking out here very slowly but surely, as you guys can see here in this descending wedge, other than this, you can also play GLD, which is a more direct play to the actual price of gold. You guys can see G, uh, GLD up two bucks today almost, up over one percent. And with the gold move today, we're also seeing the bullish move of GLD, breaking this overall downwards wedge. We popped up above 163, which, looking back, that would have been a great entry point, right, for a quick little day trade. But no worries, because now that we have the bullish break, we can always enter in on a pullback or on the continuation of this momentum on Monday. And guys, mind you, if the markets dump, and in terms of markets, I mean S&P, gold is going to do well. Not 100%, but a lot of people look at gold as a, as a uh, safe haven asset to the point where the markets go down. Gold might be up, and gold being up could push GLD up even higher, and maybe even GDX even higher, which is why I have them on my watch list. And overall, you guys know I'm not a gold bug, but I do like hedge assets like gold, like Bitcoin. I like having uncorrelated stocks, kind of like Virgin Galactic, NEO, to name a couple, right? Even Tesla you can put as an uncorrelated stock, uh, you know, sometimes. And a couple more here that I want to go over, Target, TGT. Not too crazy of a setup, but I'm looking at it here, especially if it breaks 123. So I'm going to create an alert here. Mark is at or above $123. So we'll see if it breaks there. You know, there could be a big rally up to the high 120s on target, which could give us roughly a 3% potential, um, a 3% profit margin here. And another one is CGC Canopy Growth. And this one, kind of like target, is at a sticking point right around 1750 to about 1770 to the point where we're actually stuck between the 180 SMA and that resistance at 1770 so we're squeezing in there and now we just have to pick a direction and honestly in the short term although the setup again isn't that attractive 
we might be able to go from 1750 up to maybe 1870. You know, that could be a nice short-term move here on CG, uh, uh, CGC. And even above that, we could break up maybe another 10%, 15% to the low $20 level. And we got a downgrade from uh, Goldman Sachs today on Slack Technologies, ticker symbol WORK. This was down about 3%, down $1.10 today. And now we're trading under the 33 level of resistance. It was a support up until the close of the market. And after hours, again, the markets are dumping. That's sending down Slack technologies as well. So this is not looking too good. But overall, I'm watching to see what it does around 33 to 32 next week. I think it's going to be interesting. If we somehow end up holding this trend or, uh, you know, not holding it because we already broke it, but if we somehow get out of this, you know, resistance and we start continuing this trend, maybe taking out 33, 33, 50, you know, we, we, we see work has gone from about $40 or it's gone to $40 before. So who's to say momentum can't push us there again? You know, this is one of those hype stocks out there. Although they've been facing a lot of heat, it can still do well, right? And another one that I'm watching, the last one is DraftKings. They just announced 40 million share offering, a 40 million share offering at $40 per share. The stock was actually up 3% today, up a dollar. 20 trading in a range between with the top side being 42 the bottom being around 40 so between 40 and 42 bucks so for next week guys very simple um, on this one you guys can see last time we held a support and we we rallied out of a resistance at 40 bucks we saw another rally so I'm looking to see if it does that again right and by you know that I mean okay if we break 42 maybe we rally back up to 45. That could be a move of about 6-7%. And an interesting thing here is Fauci, Dr. Fauci's coming out now saying he doesn't know if NFL football could be played. So this could be something that could hinder the performance of DKNG in the short term. So watch out on that. And obviously all other sports that deal with DraftKings because with, with those sports mostly being shut down as well, you know, it could also affect the company moving forward. So overall, guys, that's it for this video. Um, we could go on for hours and hours talking about stocks, but I, I really respect your guys' time, and I don't want to hold you guys too long. So if you enjoyed the content, as always, hit that like button for me. Consider subscribing to the channel, and don't forget to claim your two free stocks from Webull, valued up to $1,400. That's linked down below in the description box. All you have to do is deposit $100 into the account, and it takes about 7-10 days for the stocks to settle, and that's when you get your free money, guys. And again, that's link down below in the description box and yeah that's it for this video guys i'll catch you all in the next one have a very great safe weekend peace out guys